This is just one of more than 700 artifacts from the victims and survivors and Auschwitz itself that you will see in this exhibit. And the name of the exhibit, not long ago, not far away, absolutely crucial to understand, especially for the survivors, including those who live right here as our neighbors in the Kansas City area. 41 Action News reporter Sarah Plague sat down with Judy Jacobs to tell her story. I had a wonderful early childhood. That's me. That's me. Judy Jacobs says she was a happy girl, evident in this photo. But it was taken at what would be a turning point in not only her life, but the lives of hundreds of thousands of Jews in Hungary. As Hitler's star rose over Europe in the 30s, little by little, the terrible things that were happening in Germany also happened in Hungary. Even as a child, she was aware of what was happening around her. Her family banned from running their businesses, anti-Jewish laws, a complete deterioration of living conditions and human rights. The Nazis occupied Hungary in March of 1944 when I was about to turn seven, and that was really the beginning of the end. On June 30th, 1944, the Nazis ordered Jacobs' family and thousands of others to the train station in Budapest, where they were forced onto cattle cars with what little belongings they could carry. We arrived at a concentration camp, the Bergen Belsen concentration camp. Decades later, she still recalls the interactions she and her family had with the Nazi guards. They'd go by and they'd say, oh, you vermin, you're subhuman. And after hearing this every day for a month or so, I said to my mother, am I subhuman? I mean, can you imagine what that does to a person's self-esteem? As fall turned into winter, many incarcerated at the camp in Germany were sick, severely emaciated. Thousands had died. But amid the misery, Jacobs remembers one joyful memory with her mother. She announced that she was going to teach an art class to kids. My mother had a stick, and all the other kids had a stick. And with a stick, she taught the group, including myself, how to draw things like butterflies and flowers. And for a little while, at least, there was a little hope and joy among the group. In December 1944, the prisoners were marched to another train. And they had, had food for us, sardines and chocolate. Quite a combination. Don't ask me how. I don't like either one, frankly. <laughs> but believe me, it tasted wonderful at that time. This train took them to Switzerland. Jewish organizations had paid a ransom for their release. Although now free, Jacob soon learned her grandparents and most of her extended family were killed at Auschwitz. I know that they were gassed on the 30th of June, 1944, which was exactly the date that we left Budapest. Jacobs and her parents immigrated to the United States in 1946, but the Holocaust remains with her in many ways. She says she tells her story of survival for this reason. I think people need to know the, the depths to which humans can think so that they can understand that and hopefully avert that in the future. Sarah Blake, 41 Action News. Jacobs has lived in Kansas City since 1963 with her husband and children. She earned an MBA and a PhD from UMKC. And the items that her parents uh, brought with them from Bergen-Belsen were donated to museums.